Padia's landscape is constantly changing, with scores of new hotels and luxury condos taking shape every day. But have you ever wondered about the thousands of construction workers actually building these new projects? And more importantly, the children forced to live on site. Well, we're going to meet one remarkable woman who's made it her mission to change the lives of who she describes as Padia's forgotten children. And we'll also show you what can be done to improve the living conditions of those laboring to change the face of this remarkable city. It's afternoon and lessons are about to resume, but this is not your everyday classroom. When Tracy Cosgrove arrives at Sanuk Nursery in Patia, the children don't want to let her go. Sanuk Nursery was created in Thailand's resort city of Patia by Tracy and a handful of dedicated helpers. For now, this is the only option these children have if they want to have a regular meal, some school lessons and a safe environment. These are some of the children of the city's thousands of construction workers. Here is their safe haven. Um, it's a home away from home. It's probably the most love that they get in a day. Um, you know, we we teach them English, Thai, Burmese, Khmer. They're, they're taught how to love each other, how to um, just play with each other. You know, and a lot of it is fun learning. <laughs> Growing up on a construction site is hazardous, especially for a small child. The amount of phone calls I've had um, over the last 15 years from, from the police or from construction workers that there's been an accident, a child's been injured or an adult has been injured, um, it's very dangerous for them to be not just on the construction sites but in, even inside the labour camps where they all live. Even if developers say we have no children on our you know, on our construction site. No, but they're left alone in the campsites, which are just as dangerous as the construction sites half the time. And we had one family recently. The, the two had come over from Cambodia, um, the man and the wife. The man died after six weeks. He fell off the construction site. The mother, also a construction worker, was then left to care for four children. You know, living in a six feet by six feet tin house, she's working seven days a week with children from the age of two to 14 to all of a sudden take care of. Um, and, we, and we're talking from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. she's working. Tracy is an interior designer and her husband worked in construction too. Then after his death in a road accident, she journeyed from England to Asia and made a life-changing decision to help other families in the industry. Her efforts have given hope to thousands of youngsters throughout Thailand and Myanmar through the Melissa Cosgrove Children's Foundation, named after her daughter, a not-for-profit organization which Tracy set up after seeing the workers' conditions firsthand. I do it because, first of all, I'm able to do it. Um, and because of my personal experiences. Um, you know, I'm a widow of a construction worker who, if we were living here at the time, and I was Thai, Burmese or Cambodian, and the same thing happened to me, who would be there to help? Nobody. So this is what, um, this is why I started doing it. And then, you know, the knock-on effect then was I followed a construction. I was buying a condo and went to buy a condo and I am rather nosy. So I was buying a condo and I saw all these construction workers being loaded into what looked like a big cattle truck. And I thought, oh, where are they going? So I followed them. And I followed them and by this time I'm driving and they're waving at me. 
we got to the construction camp and I saw how they were living and I went back the next day and that was the start of the first nursery in John Tien. <laughs> Um, and luckily, you know, I was able to sell the idea to the contractor, to the builder, and we started from there. But her small nursery on the edge of Patia is just a drop in the ocean. The school can only help so many. This is my major gripe. <laughs> you know, we can, we can only, you know, and the staff that I have here, my God, you know, they angels in disguise, you know, they, if this was any normal big organisation, you'd, we'd have 10 times the amount of staff. Um, but we can only take so many, but also we're not going to turn them away. <laughs> um, we just have to keep closing our eyes and not keep looking for them. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, in my mind, I already know how many children are out there that are waiting and dying to come in. Um, and we just can't take them yet, but that's yet, you know, um, never say never. Helping Tracy with their time and often with their own money are numerous local business people. On Facebook I saw one day that Tracy had appealed for food for, for the Snook Daycare Centre, so I went to Macro and I bought some food and I came round. It was the first time I'd been here. When I arrived with just a some eggs and beef and chicken and pork and rice. It amazed me the, the joy of the children that came running out of these doors through the gate to help and run back in with everything. So <clears throat> maybe selfishly I got a buzz out of it and <clears throat> started coming around on a regular basis bringing food and, and really got a kick out of it and uh, always enjoy coming here, seeing the kids. Today's the first time I've actually been here and I have to say, I'm actually more or less moved to tears of joy seeing how much so little is done. So if you guys uh, want to experience the sort of joy that I'm feeling right now at helping these kids here, pop by, take a look. Um, I know a lot of people here make a lot of money out of the property industry. It doesn't hurt to give a little bit back. And believe me, the rewards in that, the way you feel when you see the smiles on their faces will more than repay you. I, I come down on, on, on work this morning, but I'm here now just to uh, say I've been look, trying to support and help Tracy for almost four years. And it's uh, what started as just a, a beer at a networking event. Um, now you, you, you find that you, you see the lives being changed around you, so you just want to support as much as you can. And then there is the small dedicated team that is here all the time. Like Peter Schoenher and Pim, who was once a lawyer, but now washes grubby faces, plays mother to a horde of toddlers, and teaches her own language, Thai, to the children. I don't want to be a teacher, only teach them uh, about the subject, but I would like to, to teach them about Molo, peaceful in their mind, because uh, if they have, uh, they, they are to be a good person when they grow up, they can stay in uh, everywhere, yeah. no fight together. They can stay in Thailand, they can go back to, to Burma, they can work together. Scores of construction workers have made their way to the big cities from villages in Thailand's northeast and from across local borders like Myanmar and Cambodia. Many of the foreigners do not have official visas, so their children don't have any rights at all in the land of smiles. We've got children, you've seen the camps, you know, we've got children, maybe four children, living in a six foot by six foot tin shack with no windows, no water, no, no food, um, while their parents are at work every day. And the main thing is, no education. They're not allowed to go to school. We, they can't even go to the hospital. You know, I've had to, I have to take children to the hospital. Um, I have to take children to the doctors because the parents are scared of taking them. 
When the school day ends at Sanuk, many of the children don't want to leave. And it's not hard to see why. They squeeze into a local pickup truck and they venture back to a home like this. A bowl of rice in a tin shack with a dirt floor. Now the people who live in this camp are actually paying rent. Yeah. yeah? Because they, they work on different projects? Different construction camps. So what we've just learned is that they're paying about 900 baht a month for the non-electric hut and about 1,500, 1,300 1, baht for electricity. If they, yeah. want a, if they want a hut with electricity. I think you'd have to pay me to live here. But, but this is yeah. the reality, isn't it? And this, again, this is why it's great that at least the, you know, the children, we can come and collect them every day. Well, this is what and they'd be living in otherwise. Yeah, otherwise they'd just be here. These children didn't ask to be brought here. They didn't ask to be living in a construction camp. The big construction camps often house up to a thousand workers or more. And as Tracy showed me, it's not somewhere you'd want any child to live. Now if you take a look behind me here, that's what these children come home to every day. Now I don't know about you, but I'm pretty shocked. Okay, Tracy, does it get any worse than this? I hate to say yes, but it can get worse than this, but I'd say this is the biggest one. You know, usually the worst ones in this are smaller. This is just on mass scale. And how many people are living here? Now, probably when the last count was 800, but there's a whole new section over there, so it must be now at least one and a half thousand, two thousand people. Good Lord. By the time they've finished, it must be at least 2,000 from what I've just seen today. I mean, one of the things we can't show you is the smell because uh, it's hot today. So all the, the, at least the flood water has gone away, but what it's left is this um, really strong smell of garbage. Yeah, and then and the rest. Yeah, well, and then you see the chickens going round eating everything that then will be, they'll be eating themselves. Oh. So you can imagine. Well, what's been amazing is all these children, you know, proudly showing oh, us where they absolutely. live. absolutely. Showing all their home. But not only the, the children are proud to show you where they live, you know, adults are saying, come and have a look at my home. Yeah. You know? So they have a and they're couch. spotless. They are spotless. Absolutely yeah. spotless. Yeah. yeah. Despite the smell and the squalor, 14-year-old Burmese girl Kemiso, her younger brother Ali, and their friends can't wait to show us their homes and to meet their parents. Even when Tracy thinks she's seen the worst, some things can still shock her. And I went in and there was raw sewage everywhere. There was children playing in this sewage. And I'm thinking, oh my God. And then we were walking past one of the tin houses and I heard this noise. And I said, oh, is there a dog inside? And the tin shack had a padlock on it. And I said, is there a dog inside? No. Oh, it's a, it's a little girl. And I said, oh. Anyway, I made them use bolt cutters and cut the, the lock off. And this little girl came out, Pim. So she comes out and she's, of course, it's light. And she had no, she was in the dark. And in that room was a bowl of rice and a bowl of water. And she just gave me this massive big smile. And I looked at her. And I looked at the staff, you know, who were taking me around thinking I was there with the CEO's permission. <laughs> and I said, why is she in here? And they said, there's no one to look after her. And it's for her own safety. And that to me was the pivotal. I was like, no way am I having this, you know? And and actually, the very next day, I made many, many phone calls, and within a week, we'd started building a nursery on that campsite. Some nights, Tracy heads to the camps to meet with the parents 
and to update them on their children's excellent progress with lessons and homework. Well, the sun's gone down and most of the workers have arrived back at the camp now and one of the local families and all the children from today have invited us in to see what life is like after dark and I have to say it's, it's quite a great little family atmosphere going on. Pim's got all the school homework, she's showing it to the kids and Tracy's joining me here on a, with a Coca-Cola. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> who are just so happy that their children and but then you get the others who really don't even want to know yeah. you know and yet the children are so disappointed when the parents you're there and it's it, it's hard because you know if it's me you know I try and oh, I speak only through an interpreter um, but they, they like the fact that, you know, when they've been told, or the children usually tell them that I'm in Myanmar yeah. and that we've been building schools there. And it softens everything, yeah. you know, so they, they know I understand. The towers and hotels continue to rise on the skyline. The investment keeps coming in. The tourists keep arriving and developers keep building their dreams. They have to think about the children. Some do. Nigel Cornick is the CEO of Kingdom Property. He's been building condominiums in Thailand for more than 20 years, and he agrees that more can be done for the workers. Having uh, seen some of the uh, conditions that some workers are subjected to um, on building sites, I, I think it's, uh, it's at least uh, fitting there's a basic level of uh, accommodation, of service, of, of respect for, for, for the workers because at the end of the day when they turn up uh, on site, if they're in a positive mind, then we get positive results. Uh, negative uh, results unfortunately come, you know, I think from, from living in, in, in sub, substandard accommodation. Kingdom Property has teamed up with construction giant Buig Thai to undertake its South Point condominium in Pattaya. I remember uh, when I first met Tracy, she bought a unit from us at North Shore. <clears throat> she uh, one day decided she would follow the contractors back to their camp because she was taking this interest in children for many, many, many years. This, this is not something new. So she got to the workers' camp and on site they'd locked the children into the rooms, mm -hmm. locked them into the rooms to protect them from the workers with a bowl of water and... Yeah. So that's when we picked up and embraced this, uh, this whole concept that, that that's not good enough. It's a shame more developers don't think the same way, Nigel. Well, in most countries they'd be forced to, 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 to do something. Unfortunately, that isn't the case here. And all you can do is, is, is try and, and, and influence their decisions. And slowly, hopefully, some of it will rub off. I'm not too optimistic it will rub off that quickly, but uh, uh, you can only try. Special effort has been made to make a more livable environment for the many hundreds of people who will call this workers' camp home for several years. Now, with a bit of extra effort and not that much more expense, this is what a workers' camp can look like. The floors are actually sealed, there's daily maid service here to ensure the camp is kept clean, and there are even satellite dishes for local TV. That's 
some of the workers' camps that I've seen actually look like slums or worse. I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, we, we wouldn't accept it, and, and that's, you know, uh, that's you know, over the years we've worked with Bowie, this is the quality of, of workers' camp we, we've come to expect, and uh, as I said, it, it, it's proved, proven in the past that it's, it's worth that extra expense, because like everything, there's no free lunches, so you know, it, it, there's a cost attributed to it, yeah. but we're prepared to pay that cost in, in, in our construction pricing, and uh, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. We are different than the, the other camp for sure. Is uh, the, you see, the our policy, the, the cleaning. When you walk in, we have the 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 maid cleaning every day. It's not we don't let the worker clean by themselves. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's why we are we are look. It's very clean. We have the the maid for clean the toilet and everywhere. That's yeah, why. one of the sites I went to that flood water uh, mm -hmm. through Going the camp, through the yeah. running through the camp. Mm -hmm and rubbish, so you don't see that here? Yes, yes, yes. We have the mayor to, to take care always, every day. Yeah, you will see. So always your policy, all your camps are like this. Yeah. Why don't other construction groups, why don't, <laughs> why don't other companies do yeah. this? Um, Is it because they would try to save money? I think that, that is the, 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 the one case on that, but in, in the company policy, Bui is uh, really concerned about the, 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 the worker living in the for the construction, they, they are, the accommodation, uh, they take care, we are take care on that one. We are concerning about, the most concerning for the, the, the worker. We uh, come down and take a look and check everything to ensure that safe to the laborers. And all. You would have seen lots of, ca lots of building camps in your career. <laughs> How does this compare with the, the in, normal contractors? In comparison with the other contractors, it uh, seems a bit different. It, this is a big difference. It's maybe because of the cost or something that's a, the other contract is different. Mm. Tracy walked around the camp with the construction team and was overwhelmed with their efforts. This is the Rolls Royce. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my gosh, it's even just, but just seeing how, not only how it looks, but even over there, you, yeah, you know, even see. here, they've got even the, the proper washing area. Proper washing yes, area. Washing area. The things you never that see on this, I've never seen this. On the camp, actually. You know, I mean, we're, it's really giving people the dignity for a simple, a simple little thing. And also the amount of toilets. Yes. You know, this is a crazy thing that you might think, but for me to see bathing and so many toilets, yeah. it really gives you a a good feel that okay this has been thought about um, it's not like the other camps I mean gosh the other camps well you've seen them yourself <laughs> this is really night and day and I think we should drag every developer here by the neck and say this is what you should do you know this is look how simple it is to do this this camp will also include a small nursery area for the workers' children. It's another school day, but on this morning, the team at Sanook Nursery has decided to host a trip to the beach for the children. They can't wait. Volunteer Peter Schoenher moved to Padia to retire, and yet he spends much of his time helping out with the nursery. Tracy, he says, has inspired him. When we met Tracy a few years ago through friends, yeah, and we were invited to, to join a, one of the Lighthouse Club events, so we did. And so we came in contact with Tracy and further on. And uh, you have to admire her. Whatever you think of her, if somebody spends so much time, you know, so dedicated, it you know, touched me mostly. I was born and raised uh, within a big family, and also Southeast Asian country, you know, and 
so so you know how to deal with kids. You get along with kids, etc. Um, and it's not only, let's say, from that perspective, but I think for the business community here in Thailand, uh, especially the developers, it also makes uh, business sense, you know? If you take good care of your people, your workers, I mean, you get it in return. There's no question about that. For a few hours, these children can forget about where and how they live. After all, the Thai word sunuk means fun. And every child deserves a chance to laugh, to play, and to learn. With Tracy on their side, it looks like their world is already a much happier place. Even when I get down, you know, because it happens, because all of a sudden there's zero in the bank, and you think, my God, you know, we've got the wages to pay and we've got no money. And then I'll come, I'll come here. And you see the children and the love and the happiness and you think, you know, okay, well, it will happen. It will happen.